God, and I am just so privileged and honored to be before you today. Let's go into prayer. Heavenly Father, we bless you. We glorify you. We thank you for this wonderful day. This is the day that you have made and we will gladly rejoice in it. Why? Because we are in it, Lord. That means that it's another day of your promises to be manifested in our lives. So you, we thank you, God, for allowing us to be here at this moment. Let the word come with clarity, with understanding and with power. Father, more importantly, Father, let us not be hearers of the word, but let us be doers in the word. So we thank you. We honor you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen, amen, beloved. That was for somebody. Somebody needed to know who God is in your life, knowing that he is your provider, he is almighty, he is your sustainer, he is sufficient, he is more than enough, beloved. So whatever you are in need of, if you will think of God that way, Oh, it will make you feel so different. It will make you have energy when you feel weak. It will make you have joy in the midst of your storm. It will make you have peace in the midst of chaos. Come on, somebody. So God needed to tell somebody today that he is more than enough. He is everything. Whatever you need from God, you need to know who he is in your life. God is such an awesome God, beloved. And I will be coming from James chapter number four, and we're gonna read at verse 14. See, you have to understand, beloved, and I've said this on other occasions, that God has something in store for you. God allowed you to be here at this moment, at this time. That means that you have to fulfill the purpose that God has for your life. I always tell people this in Jeremiah. He said to the prophet Jeremiah, he said, before you was in your mother's womb, I knew you and I called you and I predestined you. So that means beloved, he did not just say that to Jeremiah, but he's saying it to all of us. Meaning that before we were manifested in flesh form, that God knew us. He knew us in the spirit and he called you to be at a specific time as this. So you have purpose, beloved, regardless if you feel like you don't or not, you do. Why? Because you would not be here if you did not have purpose. So God wants you to know that. He wants you to know that you have purpose today. So we're gonna be coming from James chapter four and we're gonna go to verse 14. And God wanted me to really hone in for you today that you have to be aware of some things. There is something that's more valuable than money. You say, woman of God, what can be valuable than money? Because when we look at money, we look at this as a medium of exchange. We need money to be able to purchase and buy things. Listen, you half the time you can't even have money. Um, you, you can't even drink water without having money. You know, you have all these bills and you know, you have to have clothes, you have to have food, you have to have shelter. And then those are some things that we need to be able to pay for health care. Money is a valuable tool, but God wanted me to tell you today, there's something more valuable than money. Let's go ahead and read James chapter number four and verse 14, and then you will understand what God is saying on today. The word of the Lord says, why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. God is saying unto you today, there is something more valuable than money. But before I get into value, uh, talking about what is more valuable than money, and hopefully you can understand just by the scripture of what God is saying. So what does it mean to have value? Value is the regard that something is held 
to deserve the important worth or usefulness of something. It can be also defined as an estimate, the monetary worth of something. So this is something that is held to a high esteem when you talk about value, when you talk about you know something that is valuable, whether if you have a precious a uh, family heirloom or you have something that you know you purchased of a value we we see different things that have different value on it we see paintings that have value you know picasso you know most of his paintings are millions of dollars and you see other values in precious gems and diamonds and gold because it really means that something that is held as important of worth its usefulness is held in high esteem it is estimated as a monetary and it estimates the worth so God wanted me to share with you today that there's something more valuable than money so what can be more valuable than money it is time beloved it is time. See, James chapter number 14, it tells us that why do you even worry? You don't even know what tomorrow will happen. Your, what is your life? Your life is a mist that appears for a while and then vanishes. Let me tell you something. There is uh, what, what, uh, there's a saying that, you know, it was kind of an old saying. It says that time waits for no man. You know, your money might stop for a minute. Somebody money might stop flowing for a minute. You might have be down to your last dime. You know, it has different uh, money fluctuates. You know, the money that I had when I was a young adult and then now I'm an older adult, it, it fluctuates. It's not the same. Money comes and goes. So it can be at a standstill. It can flourish. But what keeps moving beloved what is the thing that keeps moving it is time so there's an old saying that says time waits for no man and i can say time waits for no man or no one man meaning that time keeps going time is one of the consistent things that you see here on this earth because it does not stop it does not slow down it does not speed up it is at a constant pace and it keeps going beloved what is God saying on today there is something more valuable than time because there was a specific time that God called you to be here on this earth he had called your mother and your father to come together to produce you and you came through the womb and your time stamp of you being physically here on this earth is your birthday beloved this is the time that starts your life who is God talking to so literally you can understand and see that when you were a kid you're no longer there in that time frame when you are in a, a teenager you're no longer in that time frame some of us are adults and older adults time is is consistent and keep going beloved and God is saying there is something more valuable than time than money it is your time God wanted me to tell you today what are you doing with your time because if time is consistent Time does not slow down. Time does not speed up. It continues to go. When you're sleeping, beloved, guess what? Time is still moving. Time, you might not be moving. You might be at a place of rest, but time is not stopping, beloved. And God is saying, what are you doing with your time? Because, beloved, if God says that we have purpose and we have a destiny, that means that we have to fulfill what God has called us to do here on this earth while we're here in time. We don't know when our time is up. We don't know when God is going to call us home. But guess what, beloved? We want to be able to do what God has called us to do. There are too many people that's wasting time. Oh, God, I hear God today. Some of us are stuck in time. Oh, God, help me today. Some of us are stuck in time. 
even though time continues to be consistent and continues to keep moving, you are, some of us are stuck in time. What are you talking about, woman of God? Because you are stuck in the past. You're stuck in the woulda, coulda, shoulda. You're stuck in the disappointments, the discouragement, the frustration, the hiccup, the problem, the, uh, the destruction that happened in the past. God is saying on today, if you continue to focus on the negative, if you keep on thinking about things that have happened in the past, you cannot move forward in the future. God even said through one of the apostles, he says that I'm putting those things that behind me and I'm pressing toward the prize. I'm going toward the hard mark. You cannot continue to look back and then expect for you to move forward, beloved. Who is God talking to? Okay, let's bring Lot's wife. You guys know who Lot's wife is. If you don't, let me bring you up to speed. So Lot was Abraham, the father of all nations. It was his nephew. And he was in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah was a wicked place and God had wanted to bring destruction on that place. But Abraham interceded for Lot and began to say, if there's one righteous man, would you save the city? But literally when God had gave the opportunity for Lot and his family to leave, he, the angel specifically said, do not look back. So as they were fleeing the city, Lot and his family, when they were fleeing the city to, from being on, uh, destroyed with the city, they did not adhere to the word of the Lord. It was actually Lot's wife who didn't adhere to the word of the Lord. She looked back and what happened? She turned into a pillar of salt. Beloved, God even just gave me this revelation. What does salt mean? Because the Bible says that you are the salt of the earth. If you lose your flavor, then you will be useless. So literally she disobeyed the word of the Lord and she looked back and then she turned into a pillar of salt. The salt was no longer in her life. The salt was useless. God is saying you cannot continue to look back and stay stuck in the past. This is not back to the future. Oh, I'm dating my age today. This is not back to the future. You can't go back. You know what happened back there, beloved. But guess what? I Even if it was a hard thing, even though if it was frustrating, even though if it was uh, 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 detrimental to your life, I am reminded of the scripture that says all things work together for the good for them who love the Lord and who are called according to your purpose. Guess what, beloved? He is, you are called to purpose. You are called to purpose. Because you are called to purpose, that means everything, the good, the bad, the indifferent, it all is going to work out for your good. Why, beloved? Because God loves you with a everlasting love. God wants you to be useful of your time. Then there's another person that literally just wastes time. You don't have any goals. You don't have any dreams. Or even if you did have goals and dreams, you allow the situations of life, the frustrations, the the present barriers to stop you from moving forward. Guess what, beloved? If God told you to move forward, if God gave you the ability, gave gave you the idea, gave you the idea to go back to school, gave you the idea to start that book, to start that business, whatever he has called you to do to minister the gospel. Guess what, beloved? He will make sure that it comes to pass. Some of us are waiting on the opportune moment to move forward. And God is just saying, would you just move forward? Because if I gave it to you, then it will come to pass. A lot of times people tell me, they say, Rashida, how did you accomplish this? How did you go back to school? How did you do this? How did you write that book? How? And I said, you know what, beloved? Because God placed it in my heart to do. So I move forward in it. God is saying move forward in it. He desires for you 
to move in time with him. The Bible says that there's a time for everything. There is a time for everything, beloved. But if you miss your opportune time that you were supposed to do a specific thing, then it's wasted and lost time. There's something more valuable than money, beloved. Money comes and goes. Money fluctuates. Money is here one day, gone the next. Money can come in abundance, it can come in shortage. Money fluctuates. But what do not fluctuate, beloved, is time. And like the Bible says in James chapter number four, verse 14, it says, you don't even know what happens tomorrow. Let me tell you something, beloved. We don't know what will happen tomorrow. There's a saying that I live by, and I don't know, I can't think of the philosopher who says it, but he says, what, why put off today? Why put off tomorrow what you can do today? Why put off tomorrow what you can do today? I believe it was one of our presidents that said that. Why? Because you don't know, the Bible tells us in verse 14 of James chapter number four, that we do not know what tomorrow may bring. If we continue to say, oh, I'm just going to put that off tomorrow. Oh, I'm going to finish that degree tomorrow. Oh, I'm going to start that business plan tomorrow. Oh, I'm going to start those classes. Oh, I'm going to write that book tomorrow. Listen, beloved, we don't know what can happen tomorrow. And then there's always something that blocks you. Like people say, how do you do that? I just take the first step. God does the rest. God is saying to somebody today, you take the first step and he will do the rest because you do not know what tomorrow may bring. Time is short. Let me tell you something, beloved. I'm a nurse practitioner by trade. And the average lifespan currently in this world is 79.5. That is the average age lifespan is 79.5. That's not a lot of years. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to live to 79.5. You might live to 80. You might live to 100. You might live to 110. Or you might live to 50. We do not know the time. We do not know what will happen tomorrow. But beloved, I guarantee you, if you will walk in purpose and do what you're called to do, you will fulfill the mission and the purpose that God has for your life. Let me tell you something, beloved. Jesus was here for a specific time and a specific purpose. Jesus started his ministry at 30 years old and finished his ministry at the age of 33. And guess what, beloved? He showed us how to live. He showed us what to do. He sent us a helper. Listen, he died for our sins so we can be saved. His life was from 30 to 33. God is showing us we don't know what our lifespan will be. But guess what, beloved? We have purpose within that. And we don't want to miss out on what God has for us because we lack the consciousness of time. You are here with purpose, beloved. It is not by happenstance that you're watching this broadcast today. You are here for a reason and a purpose. And beloved, if you don't know your reason and your purpose for being here, guess what, beloved? All you have to do is ask. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. So you begin to ask God, what am I here for? What am I here to do? I know I'm here for a reason. But guess what, beloved? You have to move forward in what God has called you to do. And when you have a relationship with him, when you ask him, he will tell you, he will show you your purpose. It will come so natural to you because it is what he has called you to do. Even when it seems unnatural at first, come on somebody. Because a lot of times we get so complacent in our own thing that when we're doing something new in God, we get out of our comfort zone. But guess what, beloved? It will be like, wow. It, one minute it will just hit you and you'll be like, wow, I feel comfortable. I did not know that I was called to preach the gospel. I did not know I was gonna become a pastor. I did not know I was gonna come, become a nurse practitioner. I had no clue or an author. 
But God, he said, I know the plans I have for you, beloved. Plans of good and not of evil. Plans to prosper you and bring you an expected end. He knows the plans, even when we don't know it, beloved, because he knows what is best for us. So we can no longer look in the past and woulda, coulda, shoulda, or be bothered by what happened. Listen, there are so many things that happened in my childhood Listen, that's why I have a book called Predestined for Greatness, because you are predestined for greatness. But the enemy wants to throw all of these darts at you before you know who you are in God. Beloved, so I look at all of those things as wind beneath my wings, what I have been through, things to propel me into the next in God, because I trust him with my whole heart. I trust him with my life. And God is saying to you you today, there's something more valuable than money. We literally put too much emphasis and value on money. Guess what, beloved? You can have all the riches in the world, but if you no longer hear, You can't spend it because God said he'll give you the desires of your heart. Heart. He said we're the head and not the tail, above only and never beneath. beneath. A lender to many nations and a borrow from none. So money is a good tool for exchange. What I'm saying is we don't post a covet after it. And guess what, beloved? There's something more valuable than money and which is time. Because if you don't do the, listen, there's people probably on their, that was on their, that's on their deathbed that wish they had more time. When someone is on their deathbed, I've read something before, they don't worry about their bills, they don't worry about their, their you know, who, none of that. They're wor- they want more time. Because if you're not here, you can't spend the money and all of this is his, it's gonna stay here. But we wanna be fulfilled We want to be fulfilled in what God has called for us. And we're going to talk about that in the next broadcast, live a life worthy of legacy. Oh God. But beloved, but beloved, God is saying to you today, what are you doing with your time? Are you being like Lot's wife and look back? So you're salt. Your flavor is no longer needed in the earth? Or are you wasting time because of your current situations? God is saying, you're a mess that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Life is so short. You have purpose. You have destiny. We want to be like Paul when when he says, I want God to say, well done, good and faithful servant. We want to be like where it says, I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished my race. We want to be used in such a way that our purpose speaks. Oh God. Our purpose speaks, whatever your purpose may be. What God has called you to do, it's going to impact someone. It's going to inspire someone, whether it's your family, whether it's your children, your community, a whole nation. We can no longer waste time. We're nothing but a vapor and then poof, vanishes. God is saying, I know money is okay. I know you need money, but don't put your stock in that. Don't, don't covet after that. What you need to do is be valuable of your time. What are you doing with your time? Are you spending time with God? Help me. Are you spending time with the Holy Spirit? Are you spending time with him worshiping and getting instructions and being in the presence of God? If we start with that, spending time with God, then he will work out all the rest. When you spend time with God, he's able to give you your purpose, your destiny, your next steps. He's able to heal your heart, to renew your mind, to give you strength. He's able to do that 
in another realm that's not natural. It's supernatural. It's spiritual. What are you doing with your time? Are you walking out the purpose and the plan that God has for your life? And I don't, it doesn't matter if you're 70 years old, if you're still on this earth, if you're 80 years old, if you are still on this earth, that means your purpose is not up yet. He, didn't, he told Abraham in the Bible, he told Abraham to leave his father's house and come up from among them and go to a land that he's going to show him. Abraham was over 70 years old when he got the call from God. So we can't look at age as a factor. We look at what is God doing in my life? What purpose is he ha that he has for me at this moment? Ask God, God, what purpose do you have for me today? What purpose do you have for me this year? What purpose you have for me for my life? And I guarantee you, he will answer and you will be fulfilled in this life. Heavenly Father, we bless you. We thank you for being such a wonderful and awesome God. Father, we thank you that you are supreme. We thank you, God, that you have told us that there is something more valuable than money, which is time. Father, help us to be useful of our time. Help us not to waste time. Help us not to be stuck in time, so stuck in the past that we can't move forward. Father, we want to be in right standing with you. We want to be on your timetable, not our own. Help us to have a deeper relationship and spend time with you, meditating on your word and worshiping you and speaking to you. Help us, Father. Father, help us to walk out the purpose in the time frame that you have called us to be here. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. God is such an awesome God. I'm so excited to be with you today. And I pray that this message resonated in your spirit. And remember, beloved, God is saying, make use of your time. I do want to open this up to those who you say, wow, I've been wasting my time. This is new to me. I heard about God before, but not in a way such as this. I want to be used for my purpose. If you are that person who do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you desire to know him, I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know you died on the cross for me. Father, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Jesus, you not only died, but you rose with all power for my sins. And you're coming back for me. I desire to be saved. If you prayed that prayer, beloved, message me. Go to my website. I would like to send you some resources. I would like to pray with, send someone to pray with you. Because now you are in the body of believers. You are saved. But now I want you to, you have to walk out your salvation. Open, in the mouth, open your mouth and confess. Confessing it is easy. It's about walking it out. And we want to get you connected. We are affiliated with so many different churches to make sure that you continue your walk in God. So thank you again. God bless you. And see you next time. It is our prayer that what is found in the book of James, that you will not only be hearers of the word, but also doers of the word. If you are in need of prayer, please call our 24-hour prayer line at 877-777-7909.